Have you ever wanted to make a masonry style layout like you see on Pinterest, only to find out that it's not actually that easy to pull off and then you have to try and find some JavaScript library to get it to work, bulks up your site with a bunch of extra stuff, then you have to figure out how to configure it and then you have to make some changes but it doesn't really work the way you want it to? Well, no more my friends. We can now do this with CSS. CSS is just getting so awesome these days, it is incredible. Though I do have to throw in a quick caveat here, at the time of recording, what we're going to be looking at in this video only works in Firefox Nightly. It's in the really early stages and things can still change with it a little bit, but it's still worth exploring anyway because it's super fun, super easy, and super awesome. You can see this as some positivity to look forward to as we finally head off into 2021. So in this one, we will be looking at what the masonry layout is, how to set it up, and how to use it. We'll also be looking at some of the cool features it has and different things you can play with, as well as a way to create a fallback for browsers that don't support it yet, just in case you're so excited you just feel the need to jump into this right away. So here we are in VS Code and on the side here I do have Firefox Nightly because this is what we need to make it work for the moment. Um, in my HTML you can see that it is pretty straightforward. I have a div uh, with a class of grid on it and then in there I just have a whole bunch of children that are these little cards that we see. I've put different lengths of content, uh, some long, some short, some images, just so we can see a little bit of how this can work. Um, so let's jump right into it and come over here. And what I'm going to do is the this code will be available. Uh, the link to it is down below as a code pen. And all the related stuff that's directly for this tutorial will be right at the top. And then all the stuff that just makes it look pretty will be down at the bottom. And the very first thing that we need to do with our grid is to obviously do a display of grid, which will not change very much <laughs> uh, once we set that up. But then we can come in on here, grid, template, columns. And I'm going to do a repeat. We're going to do a 3, 1, FR. And let's just hit save on that and see what happens. There we go. This is, you know, we get three columns. The content sort of auto flows through all of that. But this is where Grid always struggled. Um, just because you'd get these, you know, this awkwardness. And if you wanted to sort of get rid of it, you could do an align items uh, start. So align items, you know, we could do one of those. But then you just get all these empty spaces. That doesn't help very much either. So really sort of some awkward stuff going on when we would use Grid. Uh, but the awesome thing here, and this is where the real magic happens, grid template rows. And on the rows, you just write masonry, masonry. And there's no autofill or anything like that. This is, you can't find very much on it. There's documentation on it out there, but look at that. It all just fills in all those spaces. And pretty much we're saying there are no real rows. It's just squeeze everything in. And we can even see that if we go and look in Firefox's grid inspector, um, if I turn on that grid inspector there, you can see that there are columns showing up. We have my three columns and let's change the color of that just so it's a little bit, uh, you know, just so we can see it a little bit better, a bright green maybe. Um, or maybe a red actually would stand out a lot more. And we can see there's no actual rows of content coming. There's just these columns that are showing up. And that is really cool. And that, so, you know, that's, and that's why we're saying grid template rows are masonry. It's just sort of let everything squeeze into any available space it has. Um, another thing I think would be useful here is to put a gap on these just to spread them all out. A gap of 1M just like that. And then that should give us some spacing in between them, which also helps make it look a little bit nicer. So already like just doing this is so awesome and so cool and so useful. And you can see it just, it just works. It's really, really nice and really, really awesome. And there's a few really cool things that we can also do with it. But before I let you know about those, I do want to talk to you about something else. So we just started with this, but isn't it awesome already? Uh, but if you aren't really familiar with Grid, you might want to get familiar with it before you really jump into this. And one great place to really get a good understanding of it is Skillshare. They have a fantastic class called CSS Essentials, Getting Started with CSS Grid, and it's by none other than Rachel Andrew. In the course, she goes over what Grid even is, how to set it up, how you can control your tracks, how you can place items where you want, how you can start making the grid responsive, and a lot more. Now, if you aren't familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thousands of awesome classes on everything from things like web development, UI, UX, design, and much, much more than that. And one of the best things is most of the classes are under 60 minutes, making it easy to fit into your schedule. If you sign up with an annual subscription, it's less than $10 a month, unlocking all of their premium classes. And if you aren't fully sure yet, but you'd like to check out Rachel's Grid class and explore their full library, 
The first 1,000 people who use the link just down below will get a free trial to their premium membership. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping support my channel. Now let's get back to that masonry grid and see some of the cool things that you can do with it as well as how you can build a fallback to get something similar-ish in other browsers that don't support it. All right, so now that we're back into here, what I want to look at is let's say we want to take one of these and make it bigger. Let's come down here and say that we have a featured featured like that. And on the featured, we can say that the has a grid column and you can always say where grid columns are, but we just want to span and we can do a span two, and you can do a span three or four or five or whatever you want. Um, but with a span two, since we have a three column grid, what I could do is go over to my HTML and let's choose maybe this one with the image, which is right here. And I could add a featured class here. So featured, hit save. And isn't, isn't that just wonderful? Is that how nice that is and how easy that is? And even, you know, if we wanted to, we could even switch that over to a span three. This will have a little bit of a consequence where we'll end up with some empty space there um, because this is going all the way across. We could solve that by coming up to grid auto flow of dense. And that should push other elements up into that space, but it leaves this awkwardness here a little bit. Um, and this is something that they sort of have a fix for, but it's because it is experimental still, uh, we are, it does run into these weird little issues. Um, and even let's drop this back down to a span too. And we can take the dents off because we don't really need it. Um, but if I move or I add another featured one a little bit lower down, featured, um, actually, in this case, it worked out pretty well. So let's move that off of this one and just put it on this one and see if this breaks it instead. Um, there you go. You can get these sort of like little awkward spaces that come up every now and then when you have something that's spanning across because this is trying just to be as small as it can. So they do have a, a new property that comes with this called align tracks, um, which is align tracks. And again, you won't get autofill. I think VS Code will even yell at me that this isn't a real property. Um, but this is the same or very similar to align items, but let's say we do an end because we want to try and like suck this down or ideally, I guess a stretch would make more sense. Um, but you'll see it's actually going to break things. <laughs> Everything sort of shifts around and it's this weird overlap is happening here now. Uh, and if you try stretch, it's even weirder. Uh, so obviously that's terrible. And what's happening is like this is stretching to fill an empty space and you know, that's actually stopping here, but this is overlapping that one because it's spanning two columns. And from what I've been able to see from it, the issue is coming from the spans. So if you didn't have any spans going on, um, it seemed, you know, it takes away the issues that are caused by it. And you can see it's stretching things out a little bit um, because it's on stretch. Or if we did an end on here, uh, it's aligning things the other way around. So if I take that end off, everything is lined up at the top and we have a jagged bottom. And if we do it this way around, align tracks end, it all lines up on the bottom and leaves it as a jagged top. Um, so depending on like what you're after here, this can work, but they're really, I think they're still working out some of the bugs here. Um, because as I said, as soon as you throw a span on that, like now it's stretching. So they're the top and the bottom are equal. So it's balancing out all that space instead of having, uh, the jagged end. So we'll turn that off and then you get the jagged end, which is more of the typical behavior that you find, uh, with masonry layouts. But if you want them all to balance at the bottom, you can try and stretch and it just tries to balance everything out, which is really cool. Uh, but it seems to break when there's spans involved and it gets a little confused. But with the spans, sometimes you might run into these empty spaces. It's a really new technology. It is changing. So for now, you have to just work around the bugs if you do decide that you want to try and use it. And you might be going, well, Kevin, we can't use this. It's way too new. Nobody's supporting it except Firefox Nightly. Only developers are using things like that. And yeah, I, I guess you're right. But what you could do is use it to implement it and then have a fallback for browsers that don't support it. And then as browsers gain support for it, they would start getting your newer layout. That's not a terrible idea. And progressive enhancements like that are usually a really cool and good thing to do. So how can we do that? How can we build in backwards compatibility? So it depends completely on the result that you want. But one interesting one, and I think an underrated one, is instead of doing this, what I'm actually going to do here is let's uh, create a feature query. So I'm going to do an at supports. And if you don't know about feature queries, I do have a video that dives into them, but it's like a media query. Um, but it looks for browser support instead of, um, you know, screen size and stuff. So at supports, grid, template, rows of masonry, masonry. So if a browser supports masonry, what do we want it to do? Well, we want to take, not everything, but I'll just copy paste this because it's easier. <laughs> um, so what do we want? Well, we want, I'm actually going to leave gap this we need. So we're going to delete gap from here. 
and this. So like as a default, and then up here we want the opposite. So we can take the display grid off and take all of this off. So as a default right now, obviously my layout is going, or I, you know what, we, we support me, we support that we're in Firefox. So let's open this up in Chrome because Chrome is not currently supporting it. There we go. We have Chrome there, which is not supporting this. All right. So what's an alternative that we could do? And you know, I left the gap on here because what we could do instead is a display of column. Just column, note table column, call, call, column like that. And what we'll say is we want to have columns. How many do we want? We might as well go with three like we had before and hit save and like magic, we have a masonry layout. Uh, but there is a big difference between this one and the this one here. Uh, this one here is a little bit more of a logical order in that in general, it's going to be like the first item, the second item, I guess the third, the fourth, the fifth, but it sort of, it flows left to right and then fills in the spaces going down. Whereas if you're using columns, what's going to happen is it's going to go, the first one is here. The second one is here, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, right? So it's, it's going down and then back up and then all the way down and then back up and then all the way down. Depends on the type of content you have and what you want to do, but I want to explore this because it's kind of fun. And so with these columns, what we could do is you, you'll notice that this sucks because it's a kind of interesting behavior of columns, but it's breaking my cards up across and it even breaks the shadow, which is a really weird thing because um, I have box shadows on those. And so what we can do to fix that is here say that my grid, anything that's a direct child of my grid, we want to come on here and say a break inside is a void. And what that means is a void breaks inside. <laughs> I think that's pretty straightforward. And there you go. We can see that this one is now a complete card, complete card. And then we get left over the empty space over here. So we can't balance it out anymore. That's kind of normal. Um, and it's kind of annoying that our spacing is off there. So let's fix that too. So here I'd want a margin bottom of one M just so we can replicate the spacing I had before. Uh, but that presents us a problem because if we have a margin bottom there, then it's actually going to break our grid a little bit because here the spacing underneath is going to be double the spacing that we had. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. Because what I could do is if we're in my supports, we could take this, copy it. And actually let's just take this whole thing. If we're in here, we could say that my margin bottom is zero. So if it's supported, we don't have the margin bottom. If it is supported, we have the margin bottom. And that way this is in Chrome. And this is in Firefox and you can see that we're more or less spacing as everything equal, except for that little bug that we got over here. So that's kind of neat and kind of cool that we can do that. So we're off to a pretty good start. Um, even with columns, there are ways to create spans as well. So if you are looking at, uh, into doing that, you could replicate uh, that featured article type of thing. But again, it's not going to be articles that are at the top or you, you but again, if it's the order of things is a little bit different, I'm going to leave it like this, but it is something that you can look into for some future learning if you're interested in that. Now, one issue with how I've set this up is if I decide I actually want to switch this to four columns here, well, it works here, but it doesn't switch this one over to four columns. Ah, so what can we do? Well, I think a cool way to do this would be to come and say on this, we could do two. Um, I'm going to put a gap here locally scoped to my grid, but this could easily be something that's a part of your global scope because you're not only using it for grid um, or it could be like a space or one or something, but I'm going to locally scope it. And I'm also going to come up with a column count or just, we'll just put columns and we'll say three for now. So here I could have my var columns and where else do we want that? Let's copy that. I want that over here as well, where I have my grid template columns, we can put in my variable there. And then anywhere we have my var gap. So here, this gap could be var gap. We could also take this var gap and use it here on my margin bottom. And we could also take that. Oh, we only need it in those two places. That's perfect. Okay. I was going to think we needed it down here, but we don't. So now if I come here and let's just, let's get both of these on the screen at the same time and we'll just shrink Firefox down a little bit and we'll scroll that just so we can sort of see both of them. So if I change my columns here to four columns, like magic, they both switch to four columns, even though this is using columns and this one over here is using my, uh, my grid. And then I could come over here and switch that back down to two and it should switch over to two. 
like magic here. This is a little bit broken because we're at two. So I guess we could leave that um, just as a, I think it's a bit of a safer, uh, the grid auto flow of dense is probably a safer proposition just to prevent weird things from happening. Um, of course, the two here doesn't look very good, but I've also never really seen a masonry style that goes to two. <laughs> um, so let's fill that out a little bit more. So there we go. We have the masonry coming for both of those. And then I could also come on to here and why don't we just to play with it, we change the gap to three and the gap will increase there, the spacing underneath there, all the spacing changes together. Even though we're having to do this in one place with a margin bottom and another place we're using the gap property, um, because of how we've set it up and because of the magic of custom properties, this just works across the board. Now, while I'm more excited for subgrid because I see a more wide ranging use cases for it, I'm still really, really looking forward to this gaining browser support as well. I know we can't really use it today, though we can definitely use a fallback like I did or some other fallback to offer up an alternative layout. But I think with this coming to be a thing, it really goes to show you that CSS is really getting to an incredibly fun and powerful place. There's just more and more that's possible with it. And in this case, it only really makes sense, right? It always felt strange to have to use JavaScript for layout purposes to do something like this. And the more styling that we can do with CSS, the better. And with that, actually, I wanna ask you a question. What are you most excited about with CSS? Are there any upcoming features or other things with it that you just can't wait for? Or maybe there's something that isn't all that new, but you're just starting to use it and you're just really excited by it because of how cool it is. Whatever it is that you're excited about, leave a comment down below and let me know. I'd love to know what is making you excited about CSS. And with that, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you'd like more CSS tips and tricks, please do consider subscribing. A big thank you to all my patrons for their amazing generosity in helping support my channel. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.